Well, good morning, everyone, and uh, thank you all for joining us this morning as we take time to focus on education in West Virginia and highlight new and innovative programs that are helping our students get the knowledge, skills, and hands-on experience they need to achieve success right here at home. I'd like to uh, take a moment also to recognize and thank the members of the West Virginia State Board of Education who are with us today and Dr. Our State Superintendent of Schools, Dr. Michael Monterano. I could say his name now. I've, I've learned a lot the last year. <clears throat> and his team at the uh, Department of Education, as well as members of our state legislature who are with us. I want to thank you all for being here. We also have with us this morning representatives from a number of education groups and unique programs across the state that highlight the diverse set of opportunities available for students here in West Virginia at every stage of their academic journey. I want to thank all of you for being here and for your commitment to West Virginia students. Five years ago, when I became governor, we started down a path to strengthen and improve West Virginia's education system to increase the numbers of programs available for our kids, expand learning opportunities that supply skills in high demand fields, and give every student the skills they need to compete in our global economy. Together, we have made significant progress from early childhood education to high school and beyond. And our kids have access to more quality educational opportunities than they ever have before. We know a child's earliest years are also the most critical years for developing the fundamental skills they need to learn. In West Virginia, we provide one of the nation's best four-year best pre-K programs designed to do just that. In 2013, with the help of our landmark education bill, our children are reading on third grade level by the end of third grade. If a child is unable to read by the third grade, they are likely to get behind in their classes and unable to keep up with their classmates. And it's our job to ensure that doesn't happen. There are a number of early childhood education programs available across the state. And over the years, they have helped our, put our students on the path to success right from the start. Sponsored by Toyota Motor Manufacturing West Virginia, the Born Learning Program is a collaborative partnership designed for parents of young children that offers free school-based workshops to help give parents the tools they need to help keep their children to help keep to help their children succeed in the kindergarten and beyond. And last August, Toyota provided an additional forty thousand dollars to expand this program to include three new schools. And today, I'm proud to announce that future program expansion is expected in the coming year. Today, we have Pam Smith with us to share a little bit more about the Born Learning Academy at Buffalo Elementary. Pam. Good morning. I just want to talk with you for a moment about the Born Learning Academy at Buffalo Elementary. It is a program that we started, we're in our second year this year, so we started it last year. And um, Jennifer Boggs and I, we facilitate and coordinate. Um, the program at our school and it's a great program to build relationships with our families. We can build relationships with families that are already already have children in our school or families who are in our community and have children who are um, have not yet started and that's that's one of the successes we have seen we've been able to do that to begin to build relationships with those families to get them comfortable to come in and we just want families to realize how important it is and their role is in their child's education and their child's success. We have one of our families with us today as well. They came to join us and support our Born Learning Academy with us. Um, and we just wanna thank them for coming as well and for being a part of it. We have learned that um, through their surveys that the parents are using the information that they have. We provide six workshops throughout the school year and then a graduation to celebrate their learning um, and their participation in the program. Our workshops include things such as reading, nutrition, um, routines and readiness for school and learning on the go. These um, workshops during them we provide a family style meal in which we all get to sit together and eat and discuss um, their day or whatever may be happening um, at the school at the time. We, and then the children go to a child, free child care um, while we work with the parents on a workshop in a very relaxed environment in which there's lots of interaction and lots of discussions taking place. 
We just want parents to know and understand their role and their importance in their child's education and how um, they are already doing these wonderful things and the just ways that they can extend on them. Um, we're funded through Toyota and the Education Alliance and we're thankful for that. And um, we are just so excited that it's still gaining momentum and, and the Born Learning Academy is just taking off in the way it is and how important it is for our families. We've um, gained some great relationships and our families are also learning things that the communities have to offer. We have guest speakers to come in from um, the library, from extension services, different areas to come in and also share ways that they can take their children and do learning outside of their home or even in their home with their, with their children. Um, thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. We want to thank you, Pam, and you guys keep up the good work. By ensuring our kids are engaged in the learning process from birth. <laughs> Good job, Marcus. <laughs> Send Marcus back down every time. <laughs> By ensuring our kids are engaged from the learning process from birth and are equipped with solid education skills by the third grade, we're doing what we can to set them up for a bright future. Here in West Virginia, our future is changing. New business and industry investments are helping us chart a new path around jobs that require new skills. In order to fill the jobs we're creating, West Virginia students must be equipped with knowledge and skills in high demand areas like science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. I've worked hard to share and spread this message to our state students through our My State, My Life initiative. This program is designed to show our middle school students the wide variety of career opportunities available here in West Virginia and encourage them to pursue some form of post-secondary education beyond high school. We need to give our kids the knowledge and skills they need to be successful. And that starts with making sure, you've heard me say it before, that our students receive 180 days of classroom instructional time. Thank you. <laughs> Across the country, 29 states require 180-day school cycles, and 11 additional states require more than 180 days. And research shows a strong correlation between the time spent in the classroom and student achievement. As a result, we must use this standard to give our kids the educational opportunities they deserve. Our state's A to F grade system not only helps us to measure how our kids are doing in the classroom, but it also gives us the opportunity to determine the student success based on actual achievements in the areas of reading, writing, and math. As we measure student achievement, we must also consider our students who are falling behind in school and need a little bit of extra help. With the help of last year's comprehensive juvenile justice reform, we were able to establish truancy diversion programs for each of our counties to offer early intervention to those students who need it most. Last night, I was proud to share the success of this program so far and highlight the tremendous success of Putnam County's Truancy Diversion Program under the leadership of Attendance Director Jennifer Hodges. Now, Jennifer's here with us this morning, so please join me in once again congratulating her on the program's success and thanking her for the, her commitment to West Virginia students. Let's give Jennifer a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. That was a very inspiring story with winter yesterday that I thought. By keeping our kids in the classroom, we can help grow their interest in diverse areas of study like chemistry. Through a partnership between Dow Chemicals and West Virginia State University, our middle school students now have the opportunity to participate in You Be the Tennist, <laughs> You Be the Chemist, not the dentist, You Be the Chemist program. This program allows students in grades five through eight to use their skills in science to compete among their peers on both the regional and national level. And I'm proud today that we have Greg Brown and Meredith Morris from Dow Chemical with us, as well as Dr. Mike Fultz from West Virginia State University, who is here to share a few words about the program. Doctor. Thank you. Um, 
I would just like to thank Greg Brown and for his leadership in helping us establish this program last year. This is the second year and that we have that I've had the opportunity to be on the advisory board to carry out this program where we bring in middle school students from throughout throughout the Kanawha Valley to compete in a written test and then the top scoring students last year there were 435 students who took this test this year we have almost that many and we still have a month of registration time to go so we're looking to expand this and this year hopefully McDowell County has showed interest in competing um, where it's a written test and then the top scoring students come to West Virginia State University to take part in a four hour, four hour oral examination with moderators from Dow who come in and spend time with the students explaining what it is to be a chemist. Hear from the professionals, what is, what is the chemistry field like? Where is it going? So that they learn what kind of education they need so that they can get the jobs of tomorrow and we can keep that talent here in the state. We, the last year's winner, we had a student from an eighth grader from Sissonville High School who went on to represent the state of West Virginia at the national competition in Philadelphia on an all expense paid trip for, uh, that was sponsored by the Chemical Education Foundation and Dow Chemical. And this year, the same thing is going to happen with the winner on April 8th when the, uh, the West, Virginia, West Virginia champion will be crowned once again. And anybody who would like more information, we have some paper, papers in the back to take back with you. Thank you. Thank you. I'd <clears throat> like to thank Mike and Greg and Meredith uh, for being such strong supporters of STEM education. Yeah, as we all know that we have a golden opportunity in West Virginia with the uh, discovery of uh, the, or the being able to explore the Marcellus and Utica shells and the possibilities of, of downstream industries and chemistry is a very, very important part of that at its time. There are middle school students be thinking about a career there because that's where a lot of jobs are gonna be in West Virginia. Once our students are exposed to these new subjects of interest, we must provide them with additional opportunities to explore these newfound interests. And many of our state schools are paving the way for new programs clubs and learning opportunities that help our students do just that. Here with us today, we have students representatives from South Charleston and from Logan High School's robotic teams. Now, these two groups have been recognized on a national scale for their innovation and creativity in the area of robotics and have set up a few interactive displays for us today. And I encourage you after we at the end of our program to please take a few moments and stop by their tables and learn a little bit more about these STEM specific opportunities. It's a pretty good sized thing here and I wish I knew what it was, but I'll be back uh, as advanced to, to see what it is. Once our kids enter high school, they also have the opportunity to participate in on-site skill training through one of our many simulated workplace environments where students collaborate and form business teams and learn high demand skills in manufacturing, welding, and automotive technology, just to name a few. Here to share more about the Simulated Workplace program is Dr. Kathy D'Antoni, the best looking of the D'Antoni family. She's also, she's also the Chief Officer of the Career and Technical Education with our Department of Education. Kathy. Good morning. I was excited when I was asked to speak at the press conference concerning the simulated workplace because I've been in education a number of years and I have never seen an, a program or a initiative that has changed the lives of our students. I have standing in the back unbeknown to me and I was excited to hear some uh, students from a simulated company from Logan. If you'll just wave your hands back there guys. <clears throat> These young people were part of a Skyping opportunity for professional development for the state of Alabama. We have had 10 states plus the country of Australia visit West Virginia sites because of their interest in what we're doing in simulated workplace. Simulated workplace changes the traditional classroom into an authentic company with business processes that our students must follow. They run the company. They're the CEOs, the job foremen, the quality control. They are the experts at their company. The teacher becomes a facilitator 
and manages their learning and guides their learning. It has changed the lives of many children. To date, um, some, of the some of the experiences that we've had, we had one gentleman, uh, Joshua Blatt from Spring, Spring Valley Career Tech Center, who redesigned his entire classroom. He became the job foreman of his company and decided that his company's uh, environment was not efficient or effective. So he took it upon himself to redesign the entire classroom. It is currently being restructured and redeveloped, um, and it's amazing. And I asked Joshua, I said, Joshua, why? He said, I wanted to leave a legacy for my, when I leave high school. But these are the types of minds we have. We had three uh, young men from Putnam County Career Tech Center, Ryan uh, Daly, Josh Parker and Matthew Hancock from Putnam County, uh, Putnam County Career Tech Center who created and designed a chainsaw shield. That's hard to say, right? And it's the only one in the country. They have gotten a patent from WVU with the help of WVU Law School. And these young men hopefully will fabricate this in the state of West Virginia. This gives an opportunity for our students to become business leaders either work for somebody or develop their own companies. The heartbeat of West Virginia's economy is its emerging workforce and their ability of the skill and their education. And I can tell you right now from the young people back in the back that I've worked with and whom I've seen across this state, West Virginia's future is very, very bright. We have over 502 companies uh, currently. Next year, every single career tech classroom in West Virginia will be a simulated company. That's how we will do business in West Virginia. We have 98% uh, of these students are drug free because part of the <laughs> Right now we're talking about 13,000 students, 98% of the 13,000, but part of the simulated workplace culture is drug testing. And I am so proud of our young people. We have not had one pushback from our young people on drug testing. In fact, they've said, bring it on, Dr. D'Antoni. We need to show these employers we don't use drugs. Other students have thanked me because it gives them an out from peer pressure when they are asked to participate in drug-related activities. So now they have a reason not to. These young people are amazing. We also have a 98% student approval rate of this type of learning and the environment of which they are, uh, in which they participate. I have to tell you about one young lady, hum, uh, Winter Snow, who was homeless, lived in a car. This young lady went to a career tech center. She was participated in a simulated workplace. She was three times. Uh, the employee of the month, because she worked all the way through high school, employee of the month with Home Depot. She became part of the management level at Dairy Queen. That's how she got through school, and I'm very happy to say that she's on a full scholarship ride to Marshall University this fall. That is just what can happen with that kid. And, uh, other, two other things, uh, one, Toyota uh, contracted with one of our companies at Carver to help them put on the 50th anniversary of Toyota. Uh, one of our companies will be working with their personnel to deliver that event. And lastly, um, this is my age, guys, got there, I'll get there. <laughs> oh, lastly, the, the part that is so exciting about uh, simulated workplace is the fact that students live in a creative, problem-solving STEM environment. Our future, as I said, is extremely bright, and thank you, Governor, for your support in this Absolutely. initiative. Thank, thank you. you. Well, thank you very much, Kathy, for spearheading this program and for expanding these uh, efforts across our state and for the successes that you're having. And the fact that you mentioned winter again, this is a product of, of Putnam County that I talked about earlier and, and the fact that as she had problems in her lives, but what a magnificent young woman she is today that uh, I mentioned last night that uh, in 
before she ended up graduating and get her life back in order, she had 39 unexcused absences in, in a year. And then, you know, the year she graduated with what, a 3.7 uh, uh, GPA and with zero unexcused absences. So, you know, that's, uh, people can change their lives. So uh, we're just so proud of Winder and what she's done. When providing our high school students with the knowledge and skills they will need after graduation, we must do more to make it easier for them to enroll in college and to take upper level courses if that's the path they choose to take. My administration has made it a top priority not only to improve offerings at our state's community and technical colleges, but also strengthen the relationship among our CTCs and states, the state's higher education institutions. By breaking down these bureaucratic silos and building relationships, We've been able to provide our kids with more college courses that can easily transfer to different colleges and universities, making it easier for our students to achieve their post-secondary educational education goals. Today, we have with us Chancellor, uh, Chancellor Sarah Tucker of the West Virginia Community and Technical College System. She's here to share more about how the credit transfer process works in West Virginia. Dr. Tucker. So I'm gonna change things up a little bit and I'm gonna talk directly to the students. Students from McDowell County, students from Logan High School, and students from South Charleston. We, you are our future. You're the future of the state of West Virginia. And the community and technical colleges want you to know that we're ready for you. We're ready for you to enroll in our programs. We have exciting new programs that we're starting in IT, manufacturing, allied health, energy, just to name a few. And we want you to enroll in them. These career opportunities, will, these opportunities for these programs will lead you to high wage, high demand jobs that will allow you to stay in the state of West Virginia if that's what you so choose to do. And we're working, we're in the process of trying to make that transition easier for you so that we can harness the good work that you're doing with simulated workplace environment, all of the work that you've been doing in career tech education. We're trying to make sure that the, that the transition from career tech ed and from high schools writ large is easier for you so that you can earn some of the college credits uh, early when you're in high school and when you get to the community college system, you will shorten your time to degree, you'll get out faster and you can build upon those skills. Later this month, the governor is going to announce a new initiative between K-12 and, and the community and technical college system that will prioritize these career pathways for you and help make your transition even easier. Thank you very much and I look forward to seeing you in our community colleges. And I must also commend Dr. D'Antoni and Dr. Tucker you know, for being able to tear down those silos between our public school systems and our community and technical college system. It makes no sense to me whatsoever that uh, a student at the uh, CT or at our uh, vocational schools or our career uh, technical centers now takes, would take, for example, welding the first level and then decide to go on to a community and technical college and have to take that same class over again. So these two bright young women in West Virginia are working together to assure that what you take it in at the high school level is transferable and you can get credit for it to advance and get on in to a higher part of that particular career you want to get into. And I commend both you ladies for what you're doing. So. These programs that we we're talking about here demonstrate the significant impact specialized educational opportunities have on our state students. And last night during my State of the State address, I introduced a new plan to expand these types of learning opportunities through my new Innovation in Education program. And this piece of legislation reallocates nearly two and a half million dollars in existing education funding and is designed to give schools more flexibility and the opportunity to redesign the entire school and school day to focus on critical areas of study and technical skills. Exactly what you're talking about, Kathy. The success of these programs and new opportunities for the future lies in the hands of our students, administrators, and teachers. These men and women have dedicated their lives to shaping our future generation in the quiet corners of their classrooms. And I'm proud to give them the recognition that they deserve today. This morning, we have with us the 2016 Elementary and Middle School Principal of the Year, Betty Moore. Betty, please stand so we can recognize you and your significant accomplishments. We 
We appreciate your leadership. Thank you. Also with us today is the 2016 Teacher of the Year, Andrea Santos. Thank you, Andrea. Each year, the ongoing partnership with the Department of Education, Toyota, and Highmark Blue Cross Blue Shield allows us to recognize one teacher in West Virginia who goes above and beyond to make a difference. And I'm happy to have these representatives with us today, including Highmark CEO Fred Early. I spotted you there a moment ago, right there. <laughs> And Toyota's new general manager, Tim Holland Hollander. Tim, it's good to have you. Fred, thanks again for being here as you all you are each year. And, uh, and uh, Tim, uh, let me officially welcome you to West Virginia. We're glad to have you here. Let's talk about our Teacher of the Year just a little bit. And I'm very proud of the fact that she's a native of Logan County. And Andrea has been a teacher for more than 22 years and is currently a Spanish teacher at Logan High School. She is known by her students for her positivity and inspiration, and she's the first to reach out to students who need a little extra help. Andrea, I want to thank you for being here today, and congratulations on this outstanding achievement. So please join me here at the podium today to say a few words. Our Teacher of the Year. What a wonderfully blessed life I get to experience this year. I want to begin by extending my gratitude to the Honorable Earl Ray Tomlin, Governor of the incomparable state of West Virginia, and I believe that, uh, to the West Virginia State Board of Education, our State Superintendent of Schools, Dr. Martiano, uh, to Logan County Schools Superintendent, uh, Ms. Phyllis Doty, and the Logan County Board of Education, to my coworkers at Logan High School, my family, and most of all, to all of my students past and present, some who are here today. I want to thank you for believing in the noble career of education and for supporting not only the academic futures of thousands of Appalachian young people, but for hosting their dreams and honoring their voices by allowing professional educators to continue to learn and grow in the field of education like programs of the National Teacher of the Year. So on behalf of my students, I thank you for enabling me to expand my teaching horizons that they could ripple down to the students and colleagues that I work with. None of this would be possible without the combined efforts and support of our community, business community. So with genuine intent, I strongly declare thank you to Highmark Blue Cross Blue Shield for blessing me, and to Toyota, who is uh, lending me a car to drive to some engagements this year, and also my 13-year-old four-door white Chevy Cavalier, thanks you. <laughs> Thank you, Toyota. It's strange, it seems to me, that a Mexican-American woman raised in a Spanish-speaking household on a flood-prone creek in Logan County is standing here. It still seems unreal to me, but I'm here to pay it back and to pay it forward for all of those who surrounded me, teachers, church, family, community, to make sure that I dreamed as a child. Mis abuelos, my grandparents, arrived by train to southern West Virginia with a small suitcase and a desire to change their lives. My grandfather knew the power of words. He created his own dictionaries out of steno pads, and he watched soap operas to learn pronunciation. And every morning he got up in the dark to write letters to practice writing. He knew that the words he spoke, the sentences that he strung together, the ideas he framed in the English language would create a better life for his family. So he spoke and he watched his words like magic birth into creation his dreams. I'm grateful for this honor. As well, I understand it comes with responsibility to advocate for not only the students of West Virginia, but also for the teaching profession. I'm proud to be a public school teacher in Southern West Virginia. I love what I do. 
I adore my job and I love my students. Educating our young people is a job that I get paid for, but it's a job that no one escapes because we are all learners and we are all teachers. I'm reminded of a quote from playwright novelist Oscar Wilde who said, it is what we read when we don't have to that determines who we will be when we can't help it. Now I choose to interpret that idea of reading as not just words on a page or a screen, but it's everything that we allow to come into our lives and take part of us. It's not just about teaching my students how to learn, but it's about teaching them how to teach others and teaching them to believe in themselves. How to teach that tolerance just means to put up with something, but our goal is acceptance. How to teach them to respect others, to teach positivity. As a classroom teacher, I get to impart to my students how to teach those around them that Positivity is a choice. Education is transformative. Words are power. Your voice matters. And no one has the authority to stop you from making your dreams come true. You see, together, our voices are an ocean. And together, we are unstoppable. Thank you. Blessings to all. There's no doubt about it. She should be the teacher of the year. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Uh, very proud of you, and thank you for all that you do for your students. Uh, I've talked to many of them over the years, and they say you're the best. So it's good to have you. And I know that we've covered a lot of information in a short amount of time here this morning, but it's important that our students know that we're committed to giving them the strong educational foundation they need to achieve success. Today, we also highlighted a number of strong working partnerships that are developing among our state's education system. Companies like Toyota and Dow Chemicals and nonprofit organizations like the Education Alliance. As we move forward into a new year, we must continue to work together, encourage our students to attend class, be engaged in the learning process, and participate in programs like the ones highlighted here today. Together, we can ensure our students have the skills they need for the future that we are creating, and that's something we can all be very proud of. At this time, I'd like to invite everyone outside as we present the 2016 Teacher of the Year with a brand new car sponsored by Toyota and a $5,000 check from Highmark Blue Cross Blue Shield. And please remember, come back in and look at what these youngsters are do doing today with their uh, robotics classes and the STEM uh, classes that they've been able to acquire through our education in West Virginia. So please join us outside for the presentation. Thank you. <laughs> 